Let's introduce ourselves to the Petrov defense. Uh, it's also called the Russian game. And it begins e4, e5, knight f3, knight f6, counterattacking white's e-pawn. Okay, white has a few different moves he can make here. The main attempt at an opening advantage is to take the pawn on e5. But I'll briefly mention uh, white sometimes plays knight to c3 which gives black an option to transpose into the four knights game, or play some other developing moves such as bishop to b4 in the position. Another move that um, strong players sometimes play here is d4, which is kind of a modern move, uh, trying to open up the e-file. Um, but the main line continues by taking the, taking the pawn on e5 with the knight. Now, black is advised to not take the pawn on e4 back immediately. It's pretty well known that you should play d6 first and kick the knight back. However, it is possible probably to just barely get away with that move. Knight takes e4. Uh, white can play queen to e2 here, um, threatening um, action down the e-file. Black has to respond precisely. He cannot move the knight away. He has to play queen to e7 in this position. If he moves the knight away, then there's a discovered check, and white wins the queen. Uh, black also can't protect their knight in the center, because after d3, if the knight moves away, again we have a discovered check, winning the queen. And if black tries to counterattack white's knight, then white can take black recaptures, and white just wins a clean pawn in this opening, and black has no compensation for it. So after um, white plays queen to e2, black is basically forced to play queen to e7. But then white takes the knight on e4, and here's how black wins their piece back. Um, they attack the white knight because it's pinned to the queen. Well, white can follow up with d4, black captures, white recaptures, and white again seems to be a pawn up in this position, but it's hard to keep that pawn. It's not easy to um, get a good position and keep your pawn advantage. So I think black can play like this. In fact, this opening has a name. It's uh, called the Kolmov Gambit. So black goes for this on purpose. He's gambiting a pawn. Um, black usually follows up with knight to c6 to attack the pawn further. And white players have found it's just not so profitable to try to prop up this pawn in the center with a move like f4 or bishop to f4. Uh, two usual moves here are bishop to b5 to pin the knight, but then black unpins it with his bishop and play continues. Or white can just immediately give up the pawn with knight to c3. Uh, black can capture it. Queens can be traded, and white counts on um, a little bit quicker development in this position. Uh, he could try either bishop to f4, uh, attacking the knight, trying to gain a tempo, or he can play knight to b5 and attack the c7 square, and perhaps force the black king to move over to protect it. Okay, but that's not at all the main line. It's far from it. So instead of black recapturing immediately, he will normally play d6. Now, white will retreat the knight, but there is one option besides retreating it. He can play a gambit. It's called the Cochrane Gambit by taking on f7. Um, and he's giving up his knight for two pawns in this position. He'll usually follow it up with a d4. Um, and I think it's playable. I've seen even grandmasters like Magnus Carlsen play it. Um, I don't know if it was ever done in a, in a, in a serious uh, tournament classical time control game, although it probably was. Um, so white tries to attack the king in compensation for his material loss, um, and it might be playable. But we're not going to take a look at that. We're just going to retreat our knight. Now the most uh, normal square to retreat it to, of course, is f3. But I have seen games where people have retreated it to c4, or even the strange-looking d3. But we'll retreat it to f3 in this position. 
Okay, now it's safer to take that pawn on e4. And from here, I want to look at three different moves that white can play. Uh, the main line continues d4, and this is called the classical attack. It's just uh, standard opening principles. You're placing a pawn in the center. You're opening a diagonal for your dark squared bishop. So it's sensible. Black usually responds with d5 for similar reasons, opening up this diagonal, also protecting their knight. And this position is almost symmetrical. The difference is the black knight is on e4 rather than on f6. So it's strange. It looks like black actually went first. It looks like black has an extra tempo in this position. But it's really not a benefit to have his knight on e4. It just becomes something for white to attack. So white attacks that knight in this position with bishop to d3, castles, he puts a rook on e1. He can play knight to c3 to attack it, or he can play c4 first and try to undermine the d5 pawn that's guarding it. And while white's attacking that knight on e4 with very natural developing moves, he's trying to get um, uh, an opening advantage. So that's one way to play, but let's back up. Another move besides d4 in this position is the move knight to c3. Uh, this is called the Nimzowicz attack, and here's the point of it. Uh, black can retreat their knight to f6, but he will usually take the knight on c3. White should recapture with their d-pawn. And then black may develop here, get ready to castle. And here's white's plan. White will play bishop to e3, followed by queen to d2, and castles queenside. So black is going to get attacked on the king side. Um, the, white bishop, the light squared bishop will come to d3. The h pawn will get pushed. And it's very natural and easy, I think, for beginners to play this line of the Petrov. You don't have to learn a lot of deep theory to play this. So that's something I'm going to play, um, at least until I learn more about the Petrov. And then one final move I'll mention in this position, uh, which seems to be very drawish, but sometimes people play it, is queen to e2, tacking the knight, pinning it to the king. The only real response here black can make is queen to e7, and white can follow up by attacking the knight, driving it back, and it's still very boring, it's symmetrical. White can try pinning the knight. Uh, White is threatening to double the f-pawns, so black can respond by trading queens and then relieving the pin with bishop to e7. But the position's exactly symmetrical, so it's very drawish. Um, white has the move, though, so if anybody has uh, an attempt at an opening advantage, it is white. All right, that's all I wanted to say about this introduction to the Petrov defense. Thanks for watching the video.